Good morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this the 18th of August 2024. Let us commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness to us, Lord, that we have another day, another time to gather together in your presence. And we pray for your blessing to be upon us, Lord. Bless us, Lord, in our heart, our soul, our mind, and our bodies. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Almighty. You are the Creator and you fill all of your creation. So we ask you, Lord, to fill us this day and bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to our scripture reading, which is taken from Psalm 68, verses 1 to 8. Verses 1 to 8. Psalm 68. This is a psalm of David, a song. Verse 1. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered. May his foes flee before him. May you blow them away like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of His name. Extol Him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before Him, His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in His holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families, he leads out the prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai. Before God, the God of Israel. The Lord bless his word to us. Let's come before Him and worship Him. Nothing is so difficult for thee, O oh, great and 
Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness towards Lord, that we have all that we need because you supply it to us. And so, Lord, we want to give this offering in appreciation of all that you have blessed us with, Lord. This is merely a token because, Lord, we owe everything to you. So we thank you, Lord. Bless us as we give to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wednesday we have our prayer meeting at 8.30. Do join us for that as we seek the Lord together and be encouraged by testimonies and the Lord's presence. Amen. Moses was the great leader huh, of the Old Testament. And uh, in fact, the first five books of the Bible are called uh, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. He was a great hero that led the children of Israel out from Egypt uh, to the Promised Land, uh, from the Nile to the Jordan. Right? And so he is held highly uh, by the, the Jews for that reason. Uh, he is the authority, as it were, the one who God used to give them the law by which uh, they are uh, identified so strongly with. No other nation has the commands that are given directly by God. So let's turn to Psalm 90. This is a psalm that is written by Moses. He addresses it, of course, uh, to the children of Israel and also to God. And uh, we, as we know, uh, the psalms are basically songs that are sung, that are recited uh, in, uh, in their Sabbath day uh, worship of God. So Psalm 90, we start at verse 9 to 17. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children, May the favour of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Father, we thank you for your word that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, that your word is everlasting. And we pray, Father, that you will speak to us this day and give us understanding and bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, so this is uh, a psalm that uh, Moses wrote. And of course, huh, uh, he never made it into the promised land, but God enabled him to see the promised land from a very high viewpoint huh, uh, in Jordan, Mount Nebo. So he could see the whole of the land from the north to the south. So God at least uh, gave him that, uh, that permission, uh, that grace to see the 
promised land, although he would not enter it himself. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Moses wrote this psalm of praise to God. Right? And he ends it with, May the favour of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. May the favour, may the grace of God, right? What we don't deserve, but may the favour of God uh, rest upon us. Right? And indeed, all that took place in the life of Israel uh, was the grace of God. Why did God choose Israel out of all the nations of the earth? Why did God choose Israel? Uh, why did God choose Abraham to make the first promise to, the first covenant to? Uh, he called Abraham out of his homeland to a new land that he would show him. And so Abraham set out and then uh, he, <clears throat> he was given a son, Isaac, the son of promise, even though there was Ishmael, the son of the flesh, son of this world. Right? And so, Israel had the favour of God. God watched over them and took care of them. But, verse 9, All our days pass under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. This was because Israel continually disobeyed God. Uh, they were ill-disciplined and only thought of themselves. They were very self-centered, self-engrossed. Uh, they only could think of themselves, their own needs, their own situation. <clears throat> Partly because for some 400 years or so, they have been only in Egypt, a land uh, where people only thought of themselves. Uh, so they, they got used to that environment of self-thinking, uh, egotistical living. Uh, so they loved themselves. Uh, they did everything for themselves. Right? And that's the way we are until uh, God comes to us and wakes us up. Right? And so all our days pass under your wrath. Uh, it speaks of the judgment that Israel faced throughout their history. So what Moses said was also partly prophetic for all the battles that Israel lost. Uh, Judah and Israel, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, what they lost, the battles that they lost throughout their history, uh, even to the uh, destruction of Jerusalem in uh, uh, AD 70, right? And all the uh, wars that they've had since then. Uh, wrath, suffering, right? They put God to the test and rebelled against God. You know, they, they kept on complaining to God. Oh, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Uh, when God supplied them manna, then they complained, Oh, no meat. <laughs> uh, no water. Do you bring us out to die in the wilderness? Uh, oh, then they started thinking about the onions and the, the, the garlic, the leeks, you know, all the food that they had in, his, in Egypt. Right? But uh, they, they did not uh, complain about being slaves, uh, being in Egypt. Because in Egypt they were slaves, they were not free. Uh, they were in bondage and they had to obey uh, their Egyptian masters. They had no rights, no privileges, only servitude, serving their masters. So like their fathers, uh, uh, throughout uh, the history of Israel, they were uh, faithless and uh, unreliable. In fact, if we turn over to Psalm 78, uh, <clears throat> Psalm 78 verses uh, 56 to 59, you have uh, four verses. 
right? But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep His statutes. They did not keep His commands, His laws. Like their fathers, they were disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bow. They angered Him with their high places. They aroused His jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, He was very angry. He rejected Israel completely. Right? God rejected them. Why? Because of all the disobedience, uh, the rebelling, the faithlessness, the unreliability, the irresponsibility. You could not depend on them. Right? God would tell them to do something and they, they might do it once or twice and then forget it. Huh? They were like children, uh, only wanting good things. They were unreliable. And then they angered him with their high places. You know, places of worship. High places are, you know, in the mountains and so on. Uh, good feng shui. <laughs> right? Places to worship. You know, they, and they worship idols. They did not worship God. Right? All these high places were to worship the sun, the moon, the stars, and so on. So, uh, they, they, they angered God. And uh, so he rejected Israel. So this was self-inflicted. Uh, when, when you disobey, there is a consequence. Right? Then we, we see the next verse, verse 10. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and fly away. Right? So if we are strong, we can last till 80. Right? Uh, but it is filled with sorrow and trouble. Right? There are things that make it not so pleasant. Right? But they quickly pass and then we fly away. Right? They fly away. But, you know, 60, 70 years, uh, for us, you know, that is our life. That is what we are used to, right? And that is all that, you know, God assigns to us, generally. Uh, there are some who are fortunate or unfortunate <laughs> to live to 110 or, or, you know, 118, I think, is the world record. But by the time you reach 118, all your children have gone. You only have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. You know, all your friends are gone. You know, it can be a, a lonely existence huh? uh, when you are old. Right? And uh, that's the case, you know, with, with every uh, one who lives above 100. You know, uh, it's relatively lonely, huh? but you know, if you can live, then <laughs> you've got something to thank God for, huh? to be able to live, to be so strong huh? as to live until then. Right? But <clears throat> what does, uh, what, do, what fills our minds in those six, uh, 70, 80 years? Right? If we don't know God, then our life is filled with ourselves, with what we are involved with and so on. Right? Every day we wake, every day we go to sleep. Sunrise, sunset. Huh? And that is God's faithfulness huh? that He gives to us every day to live. Right? Breath to live and so on. And yet it says here that they quickly pass and fly away. Uh, quickly pass. Uh, maybe for young people, it, 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 uh, you know, they, they're looking forward. They're thinking of tomorrow. They're thinking of the future, next year. Uh, uh, next five years, next ten years. Uh, and it takes time. It's so slow, you know. 
They want to get on with life. Uh, but for old people, well, you know, it seems to have gone by. You know, you can look back, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right? And uh, it seems to have gone by. Right? See, and then it says here, we fly away. Fly away. Right? So our, our lives are uh, dictated by time. But God is not dictated by time. God has a purpose for our lives on this earth. And only in Him uh, can we realize that purpose. Right? Only in Him we can realize that purpose. In verse 11 it says, Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Now, in this life, we don't have many fears. Uh, thank God, we live in a country that is relatively safe. You know, a, a lot of tourists uh, come to our country and say, Oh, very safe. You know, because they have not been robbed or mugged uh, or scammed. Of course, there are a few who are, uh, but very few, very few compared to those who visit, you know, certain other countries in certain other places. Where the moment you land in the airport, you know, there are people looking uh, to make you a victim, uh, to cheat you, to trick you into spending your money, giving your money away to them. But in Malaysia, no. So we are relatively safe. So we don't really understand fear in that sense. Right? We don't have much to fear. You know, even if uh, prices go up, it's not a fear, is it? <laughs> you know, uh, it, we have to adjust. La. We have to think a little bit. You know, maybe you don't buy the luxury brand. You know, we go for simpler and so on a brand. Huh? So we don't have great fears in our country. Uh, but there is one fear. Uh, the fear of sickness, the fear for our health, uh, the fear of death. Uh, and everyone is held by that fear to some extent. <coughs> some more than others. But as Christians, we should realize that we have a Heavenly Father who watches over us, takes care of us. And that requires faith huh? to believe in God to take care of us but that is vital that is important because that determines the quality of our life and so we must learn to discipline ourselves huh? to follow after God to pray to him read his word to trust in him for every situation uh, that is in our lives. Right? In uh, verse 12, teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In the Bible, wisdom is equated with salvation, with knowing God. Right? Knowing God. The beginning of wisdom uh, is the fear of God. When we fear God, when we come before Him when we bow, when we submit ourselves to Him, He gives us wisdom, He gives us salvation, and He gives us His peace and all that He is. He comes to us, right? We are not abandoned, but we are found by God. Now we are like a lost sheep, now wandering, not knowing where to go, what to do. But God, the, the Heavenly Shepherd, finds us and brings us into his fold, brings us into his family, makes us his children so that we belong to him, so that he can watch over us and take care of us. But we must have that trust, we must have that belief uh, in him. Right? So, the prayer in verse 13, Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Uh, this is a, a prayer to ask God uh, to help us through the challenges, the days of uh, 
trouble the late days of sorrow. Because these things are inescapable. It's part of human living. Even Jesus himself went through sorrow. Jesus himself faced trouble, right? In his life, even though he was perfect, you know, he faced disloyalty, abandonment. Yeah, he was denied uh, by uh, Judas, right? He was insulted, uh, disowned by his own people, the Jews, even though he's the king of Jews, the Lord of Lords, yet he was disowned by them. But thank God, right, in uh, uh, verse uh, 15, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble, right? Give us joy uh, for as much as we have been afflicted. That was Moses' prayer. And indeed, God can give us joy to compensate for whatever we go through. But you know, we are like athletes in that sense. God is preparing us for a future. Uh, our lives are not without purpose. God is preparing us for a future. And whatever we go through serves to draw us to depend on God. Uh, and then to be able to win the race. Uh, to be able to triumph and succeed uh, at the end. You know, an athlete trains, an athlete denies himself, an athlete listens to the coach, to the mentor. And that's what we need to do. We need to come back to God. We need to come to our coach, our mentor. Listen to his instructions. Follow him, depend and trust in him. Because he has our best interest in mind. Huh? Whatever discipline <coughs> he puts us through, you know, having, you know, as an athlete, you know, having to lift weights every day, right? Having to run, you know, hundreds and, and maybe thousands of meters, huh, kilometers. It has a purpose to strengthen us so that we can succeed huh, in whatever physical discipline we are involved with. Right? That's the purpose of discipline. That's the purpose of the sorrow and the trouble that we may go through in this life. To help us to draw near to God. Uh, if we never had trouble, we would probably never come to God. Right? An athlete, you know, if they are successful, they won't need a coach or a mentor. But you know, no one is perfect. And we don't know our own faults. Right? And that's what an athlete, you know, needs a coach for. To point out to them their weaknesses. To point out to them their faults. You know, missteps, wrong technique. You know, you may be wasting your energy doing something. Uh, and your coach can help you to focus your energy, focus your technique on what will bring victory. Right? But without the coach, without the mentor, we are left alone, you know. And who is so smart to be able to find fault with themselves? <laughs> you know what I mean? We think we're good, we're great, right? You know, but if we go to a coach, then a coach can help us to refine, to perfect our techniques, to focus our strengths, uh, uh, to overcome the weaknesses that we have. None of us are perfect. Uh, none of us have perfect skin. That's why we sometimes need to go and do facial, <laughs> go to the spa, <laughs> uh, to have some massage, some treatments, all kinds of things, right? To help us to succeed, to be better, to improve, right? And may, verse 16, May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. Alright? 
your splendor to their children. You know, uh, many tourists come to Malaysia and the first thing they say, wow, huh? uh, so many tall buildings in KL, you know, the Twin Towers, huh? the tallest uh, twin buildings in the world. And at one time, the tallest. Uh, and then, of course, now we have our Merdeka 118 that is not yet completed, although the uh, foyer was officially opened in January. <laughs> uh, the, the, what do you call it? Uh, the opening ceremony was done, but the building is not yet complete. <laughs> uh, they're, they're still scaffolding, they're still building. Uh, they're still constructing and so on and so forth. <laughs> That's uh, Malaysia Bole. But you know, tourists come and see, wow, so grand. Right? You know, but uh, I think we, are, we might have got a bit, uh, what do you call it, got used to it. Lah. Uh, Twin Towers. So, you know, we see it so often and you know, it's, it's on, in, in, in so many. If you see any promotional a leaflet about Malaysia, often it's a Twin Towers there, isn't it? Because it's such a symbol of Malaysia uh, for us. So we got quite used to it, but to, for tourists, uh, it's something unusual. And many of them think of us as a third world country, you know, uh, poorly developed, you know, poor, lousy roads uh, and everything else, poor. They come and they come into our airport. Uh, they you know, travel by rail or, or coach or whatever uh, into KL, Grab and so on. They see our technology and they're surprised. Uh, so that's the splendor uh, of Malaysia. But what is the splendor of God? The splendor of God is His creation. The mountains, the hills, the valleys, the sea. The greenery, unfortunately, you know, unless you go into the countryside, you don't see the greenery. Huh? But that's all. All of that is God's creation. Huh? If God did not create the water cycle, we would not have rain, we would not have the lush vegetation, plantations. Our industries depend on water. Uh, so much so, you know, when there's a water cut, uh, uh, the, the water company has to supply water to industrial users uh, because so much of industry depends on water uh, for cooling, for processing and for whatever uh, they use water for. So, uh, our, the environment is very important and God created it all right and God is faithful so that it continues all the time uh, but the failure is man uh, we dirty the river so that the water cannot be processed by the water plant to you know pipe to homes they have to stop all that until the river water is clean uh, unfortunately, that is the uh, the failure of man. <laughs> uh, the the splendor of God that is that He created the rain, right, to water the ground, right. So we must always learn the splendor of God, to praise Him, to worship Him, to adore Him, right. And then we don't think about our problems, our sorrows, our troubles so much. Right? And that's the purpose, you know. That's why he said to keep the Sabbath holy. Uh, that's one of the Ten Commandments. To keep the Sabbath holy. To keep one day holy, separated to God. So that we can learn to think of Him on that particular day. To think of His splendor, His deeds, the good things that He has done in our lives. The good things that He has done in our country. The good things that He has done in our family. The good things. Now we must focus on that. Uh, the, the, things, the bad things will always grab our attention. <laughs> because they need our attention, isn't it? You know? But the good things, 
you know, uh, we need to think about those, right? We need to think. Maybe only in conversation when you're talking with our friends, then we may think uh, of some of the good things uh, that uh, happen to us. Oh, this happened to me, you know, we, and we share the good news and so on. So at the end, it says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Right? Be with us. Take care of all that we do so that we succeed. Establish. Because establish means a long time. Make it last a long time. Right? Make it last even when we're not around. Establish it. Right? The work of our hands. And that is important. Only God can do it. Only God can establish the work of our hands. You know, the Chinese have a saying, uh, uh, wealth only lasts three generations. <laughs> uh, because the fourth generation didn't work hard for it, they don't really appreciate it. They just spend all the wealth uh, that has been accumulated, that the first generation worked hard for, the uh, second continue. Uh, uh, the, the third, you know, begin to waste it away. Uh, but God uh, can establish the work of our hands. God can uh, take care of our descendants. Right? And so Israel, even though it didn't exist as a country for many years, today is a country once more. Uh, God has established Israel in the promised land once more right? so that is evidence that god can take care uh, of what we leave behind as long as we trust in him as long as we walk with him right as long as we serve him god can establish the work of our hands father we bow before you and we ask lord that you Help us to walk with you. Help us to be disciplined by you, to be mentored and coached by you, so that we can improve in our lives on this earth, and so that we can prepare for eternity. Indeed, Lord, establish our lives, establish all that we do on this earth. For your name's sake, Lord, because we pray all this in Jesus' name. Let's rise as we close the service. Father, we thank you that we are gathered here today. We want to pray for our country, our land that you have uh, put us in. Bless our Agong, our Prime Minister, the ministers, the State Assemblymen, Ventry Basa, all who lead us and our country. Bless them with wisdom and establish them in righteousness lord especially let righteousness be their hallmark be in them let them be pure let them be holy let all unrighteousness be taken away from them lord we thank you father that you are the almighty and we pray for ourselves lord that your hand be upon us upon our health our strength we look to you lord hallelujah Oh, let your health and strength rain from heaven onto us, even as you rain water onto the earth so that the crops flourish. Thank you, God. Let our lives flourish. Let our lives be fruitful for you, Lord. Now we commit to you our sister Vivian, who is not well and and a sister also, Lord, bless them with health and strength. We commit our brother Chin here also into your hands. Bless him with health and strength, Lord. Let every weakness be gone from him in the name of Jesus. Let the health and strength from heaven fall into him and overflow him in the name of Jesus. We command angels to surround him at all times to guard him and keep him. Strengthen his faith. <clears throat> Keep his eyes on you, Lord, that your health and your strength may be in him at all times. Thank you, Father. 
uh, we commit uh, ourselves, our families into your hands when you watch over our loved ones that they too, Lord, may be blessed by you in every way. We thank you, Father. Go with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.